My name is Jessie James, and I'm a member of the Youth Advisory Council here at Primary Children's Medical Center. The members of our council that you'll be seeing here today have had many experiences as either patients or siblings of patients at various Intermountain Healthcare clinics. We have experienced the impact of the healing commitments that you strive to use each and every day. Today we will be sharing with you some of those experiences of what the healing commitments look like through our eyes. As employees of Intermountain Healthcare, it is your responsibility to help us feel safe, welcome, and at ease. The ways you can do this is by making eye contact with patients. Also, being calm and confident and talking to me, the patient, not my parents and not the other doctors and nurses around. Hi, my name's Anna, and how I experienced the hospital was as a sibling, because my little sister Emily, she had this rare disease called Pearson syndrome, and she had to come here for about a month at a time sometimes. And so when I was here visiting her, I experienced some of the healing commitments. One of the things that helps me feel safe here and welcome when I'm at the hospital is that when the providers that are working with my sister, when they are positive, because if they're positive, then it helps me feel happy and positive too, and I'm not sad. And another, things that help, another thing that helps me feel safe and welcome and at ease here is when the providers introduce their name and what they're gonna do, because I like to know what they're gonna do to my sister, because it helps me feel more comfortable and safe. One of the first times I went to visit my sister at the hospital, I was way nervous to go because I was really scared about meeting the doctors and nurses, and I didn't know like what they would say to me or if they just ignore me or not. And so right when I walked into the room, there was a nurse there, and she said hi to me, and she asked some questions about me, and she ought to know me a little bit. And now I'm friends with a lot of the doctors and nurses that worked with my sister while she was at the hospital. And that really helped me a lot because they didn't just ignore me. Even though I wasn't the patient, they still helped me feel welcome at the hospital. One thing that is important to us is that you listen with sensitivity and respond to our needs. Ways you can do this is by taking the time to sit down and be on the same eye level with us when we are talking to you. Also, show empathy to what we are going through and ask clarifying questions. My name is Braxton and I was put in the hospital because I had medulloblastoma and that's basically a brain tumor, cancerous, and it was in the back of my head and it would break off and send little tumors down onto my spine. I had three spine tumors and uh, through 2010 and 2011 I was in the hospital and for the first month I had heavy radiation every Monday of the week and for the rest of the year I had to stay a week at the beginning of each month to get heavy chemotherapy. When they'd bring up the table dinners, they'd have these green lids, and I don't know what it was, but I guess it was the chemo or the radiation, but the smell of the green lids just like made me feel really, really nauseated and I couldn't eat. So I'd tell the nurses not to do it, to bring the lid, and they sometimes they'd come back with the green lid and I didn't have it that way and you know I'd keep asking them. They'd put a note on my door or something that said I didn't want the green lids but it'd last maybe a week or so and then they'd start bringing them back again. It just would have been better for me if they'd respond better. And Get to know us as people that have hobbies, talents, and interests. We are not just a diagnosis. Talk to us at our level, not like we're a little kid and not like we're a PhD student. Prepare us for what's coming and be understanding of our reactions. These are all ways that you can treat us with respect and compassion. My name is Mary Covey, and the reason I'm familiar with the hospital is because I had a stroke. I was here for 21 days in the neurotrauma unit. Respect and compassion are to me of following through with what you say, using age and appropriate language and treating me age and appropriate. I once had a nurse who, she always made me feel comfortable by making sure I always had things that were 
for teenagers, not just for little kids. And it made my stay much more easier and welcoming. Um, compassion for me is understanding my reaction if I'm in pain and also taking the time to get to know me. I once had a tech tell me that I had many visitors and she told me that my visitors, my visitors would, would eventually stop coming and I should expect them to kind of forget about me while I was in the hospital. And it, she didn't know my friends and she didn't know my family and she didn't understand me and she didn't understand that I knew that they would always be there for me and always be there, but it caused a lot of stress and a lot of worry for me. Try to keep us informed and involved by not making promises that you can't keep. Also, not giving us too much information at one time. We'll ask for more if we want it. And giving us a goal to accomplish so we can be part of our own healthcare. My name is Shannon Nichols and I'm familiar with the hospital because I have juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and a metabolic disorder. I'm frequently in and out of the hospital. I think being informed and involved is really important because one of my experiences was my doctor came in when I first started going to get like surgeries done and she sat down with me and actually talked to me and faced me right to the face and told me everything that could go wrong and everything that could go right and she just kept me informed and saying that the surgery might not work but it was a chance to try and get me better. We are and we want to be part of the team. So help us help you by connecting with us and keep everyone on the same page throughout handoffs and shift changes. Hi, my name is Amber Kane. I have dwarfism. My type of dwarfism is achondroplasia. I come to the hospital all the time for clinicals. I've also had surgeries. I have knee problems, back problems, you name it, I've probably had it. Um, I had neck surgery when I was 18 months. Uh, I had ear surgery, I have it all the time. I was partially deaf in one ear, and yeah. I think communication is a big key. It not only helps us so we don't feel scared of you, but I think it'll help you. So before surgery, if you could set aside some time to talk with us about what you're going to do and how this will tr affect us and what the aftershocks will be or whatever, I think it'll be easier. And also talk to the nurses about it so there's not confusion. So earlier this year, I went in to get ear surgery because I was partially deaf and they were going to do a skin graft to fill up the hole. And I was freaking out because I don't like IVs. And so I went into the hospital and I was hoping I could get one of those airbrush jets that numb it so you don't feel it. Just my luck, they were out that day. <laughs> so I had to deal with it the old fashioned way. And I was terrified and it was just horrible because I'm afraid of needles. Later on, a few moments later, the doctor came in and asked why I got an IV. So I think there was a miscommunication between the nurses and the doctor. And it just made it more stressful for me because the person who's scared of needles had to deal with it when she shouldn't have anyway. I'm Jacob and I come to the hospital because I have cystic fibrosis and cerebral palsy. And I'm Brendan and I come to the hospital because I'm his brother. I remember one time we were visiting here uh, and I don't live too close. I live about an hour drive away from the hospital. Hour and a half. Not an hour. In between there. But uh, I got up there and I could only stay for 10, 15 minutes. And I got up there and he needed a procedure done. And so we couldn't really hang out or do much because he had to have this procedure. If you have the ability, you have the responsibility to help and solve problems. We like it when you give us updates on the problem as if it's being solved. Also, having a can-do attitude. We know you are the professional, but we have valuable insight as well. So be flexible and open-minded. 
My name is Taylor and I stayed at the hospital for a week for my asthma. And when I was here, I experienced a healing commitment. When you are talking to a patient, make sure to make eye contact. When you make eye contact, the patient feels like you are listening. I feel it is, it is important to respond to the needs of the patient and the family. One need I needed here at the hospital was sleep. Nurses would come in and wake me up and do what they needed to and then leave. A way to fix that is to make a plan for overnight procedures and don't wake the patient up if you don't need to. Hi, I'm John. Hi, I'm Reed. We were here at the hospital for about a year off and on because our sister had a rare mitochondrial disease that impacted a lot of her organs. So I think one of the good ways to solve problems is for the patient to be able to trust the doctor or nurse that they're working with. And I think another good way is for the doctor or nurse that's working with the patient to be understanding and follow up to the patient's needs. If, they, if, they're, if the nurse needs to clarify on anything, it's okay to ask questions. That It's better to ask questions than to not be able to do what the patient's asking in the first place. Another way that I think is a good way to help patients out is to be able to develop good relationships with the patient and the family. You can do this simply just by having normal conversations with the patient and each one of the family members. You, you can talk about their hobbies and things like that. So it's also important to have a good attitude as a doctor or nurse and um, our sister was lucky enough to have a lot of great doctors, nurses, and child life specialists working with her. One child life specialist in particular and a couple of nurses in particular were very good. And when you have, when the nurses have a shift change, it's very important for the previous nurse to communicate all the current needs of the patient to the new nurse so that they can continue problem solving. As youth, we appreciate all that you do to make our experiences the best they can be. These healing commitments are very important to us and make all the difference. We hope that seeing them through our eyes helps you strive for excellence.